What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. It is your girl Christina and today's video is part one of two videos where I'll be going over the mulatos and sambos of the Americas. I did this video in two parts just because it was a lot of information and I figured it'd be better to just break it down. So in this first video I'll be going over the mulatos and then in the second video over the sambos. Now, disclaimer. I know that not all of the black groups in the Americas are mixed. I know there are certain pockets of people within the Americas where the black people have still remained pretty pure. However, most black people on this side of the world are mixed. Number two, I'm speaking in very general terms in this video, okay guys? Three, I know that there are also um, East Asian. Indian and Asian influences, especially in the Caribbean, but I will not be covering those in this video. That would probably have to be a separate video in itself. And lastly, when it comes to mulatos, guys, some are very light and some are very dark. Genotype does not always match phenotype. You can literally be biracial and come out looking white like Maria Carey or black like Barack Obama. So just keep that in mind, all right, guys? And so with all that out the way, we shall now get on to the video. Mulato is a historical racial classification used to describe a person of one white parent and one black parent, as well as a mixed race person who is the result of generational mixture. Mulatos represent a significant part of the populations of various Latin American and Caribbean countries. This is especially true in countries like Brazil, the Dominican Republic, Belize, and Colombia, which are among the countries with the highest proportions of mulatos. So I'm going to begin this section focusing on the Spanish Caribbean first, and I'm going to begin with the Dominican Republic. DR is always among the first two or top three countries that are mentioned in this conversation of countries that have large mulatto populations. And I think it just has a lot to do with the history of the country. So the introduction of African blood into the island of Española has a long history. And as many of you know, Santo Domingo was the first colony to import black slaves. Over the course of a few centuries, African ancestry would not only be the result of the slaves brought into the eastern side of the island, but also from fugitive slaves from the colony of St. Domingue, which is now Haiti. And once slavery was abolished, African American freed people would arrive, which were called the Samana Americans, as well as black laborers from the British West Indies, whose descendants are known today as Cocolos. Due to the prior establishments of slavery in Santo Domingo shifting from gold mining and sugar cultivation to cattle ranching, this allowed for a more lax relationship between whites and their slaves. A Frenchman who traveled from the colony of Saint Domingue to Santo Domingo recorded that the slaves, quote unquote, were fed as well as their masters and treated with a mildness unknown in the colonies of other nations. Now, rape and sexual abuse did occur, especially in the early days of slavery. However, there were also consensual relationships between white men and African women. This proximity and relationships between whites and black people allowed for a large mulatto population to form, with a number of mixed race people of color matching those of white people at one point, and that number would only continue to increase. In 1871, American Samuel Hazard visited the Dominican Republic and stated that the majority were neither pure black nor pure white. He said they seemed to be practically destitute of prejudice of color, race, and class. Currently, mixed race people make up two thirds of the island's population and almost 90% of the population possess varying degrees of African ancestry. Now moving on to Puerto Rico, the history of black people in Puerto Rico actually started with free African men, who are known as libertos, who accompanied the Spanish conquistadors in the invasion of the island. Once the Spanish established their colony, they enslaved the native Tainos, but with so much of their population dying, they turned to the importation of African slaves to work the mines and build their forts. Many Spanish men took Taino and West African wives in the first centuries of Spanish rule, making the islands overwhelmingly mixed race. After the Spanish began to lose interest in the colony, they encouraged free people of color from the British and French Caribbean islands to come to Puerto Rico to protect their native vessels. The expansion of sugar plantations, however, would increase the demand for slave labor again, and thus the slave population increased. <laughs> 
Mass immigration from European countries shifted the ethnic makeup of the country from being two-thirds black and mulatto at the beginning of the 18th century to being just over two-thirds white by the middle of the 20th century. Sources estimate that 60% of Puerto Ricans have significant African ancestry, dating back to the slave trade. The majority of mulatos and those of higher African ancestry can be found in areas such as Loisa, Carolina, and Ponce. As with the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, the emergence of a mulatto population in Cuba has its origins in slavery. With Cuba becoming the primary source of sugar after the Haitian Revolution, over a million African slaves would be imported into the island. Cuba's slavery system was gendered in that some duties were performed only by males and others only by females. Females were many times forced to work as sex slaves in the towns, and mixed-race children would be born. Now, similar to the French colonies, some enslaved Black women were able to gain their freedom through having relationships with white men and having their children. Similar to other Latin cultures, the white men had looser borders between themselves and the mulatto and mixed-race population. White men who took slaves as wives or concubines would sometimes free the women and their children, and the free mixed-race people began to constitute another class between the ethnic Europeans and mass of African slaves. Currently, 26% of Cuba's population identifies as mixed race. Mixed-race mulatto children sprung up all over the Caribbean, most being products of white slave masters and their black slaves. And as time went on, they also were the products of generational mixing on these islands. More than a quarter of British Afro-Caribbean men have a Y chromosome which traces back to Europe rather than Africa. In Haiti, people of white and mulatto descent constitute 5% of Haiti's population. In Haitian history, mixed-race people were the children of French slave masters and slave women, and in many cases, they were given education and property before the revolution. White's fathers in many cases arranged for their mulatto children to be educated in France and to join the military. The mulattos of Haiti gained social capita and political power before the revolution, they were influential during the revolution, and have since then retained their elite positions within Haitian society. Numerous leaders throughout Haiti's history have been mixed race people of color. Jamaica was originally a possession of the Spanish until the British conquered it in 1655. By the early 1670s, as the English developed sugar plantations worked by a large number of slaves, black Africans formed a majority of the population. During slavery, however, white slave owners fathered numerous children with slave women, and generations of children of mixed race heritage resulted. Whites tried to divide them into various categories, such as mulatos, sambos, quadroons, and mestis. These people of color oftentimes felt a distinct advantage and pride in being slightly removed from the Negro class and attempted to take on manners and customs of whites. Many women of color did not marry other men of color and found it more reputable to be kept a mistress of a wealthy white man than to marry a Negro. This also ensured that their children be granted inheritances from their well-to-do white fathers. Colored people would eventually start participating in political and civil bodies on the island and dividing legislative and judicial power with whites. Currently, self-identified mixed-race people make up 6% of Jamaica's population. In islands like Martinique, which was colonized by the French, there had been so much mixing between white masters and their black slaves that slave owners would be fined 2,000 pounds of sugar should they have been found to father a mulatto child. The mothers and their children would be confiscated and given to the hospital never to be redeemed under any pretext. Now, fun fact, there was one case of a French priest who was supposed to manage the scandals of the mulatto children while their mothers appeared in court. A slave woman appeared one day accusing him of fathering her child. The courtroom went into an uproar. The priest tried to contradict her statements, but the evidence was too much. She stated that no man had made love to her except that priest who had spent the night at the plantation 10 months prior. She held up the baby next to him and said, you are the father. The Mori Show of Colonial Times. Now we will move on to the mulatos of Central and South America. Mulatos are numerous in countries like Panama, Honduras, Costa Rica, Colombia, Venezuela, and even some in Peru. Panama, though a majority mestizo country, has a large mulatto community as well. 
them being the descendants of enslaved Africans who arrived during the colonial era, as well as Afro-Caribbean migrants who came to work on railroad construction projects, agriculture enterprises, and most especially the Panama Canal. 50,000 workers who built the canal were recruited from Jamaica, Barbados, and Trinidad, many of who stayed and built families there. Reggaeton, which was originally called reggae in Espanol, originated in Panama and was a product of this group. Panamanian reggae emerged in the 1970s as a blend of Jamaican dancehall, reggae, Trinidadian soca, and calypso music. Mulatos make up 6.8% of Panama's population. Brazil has the largest black population outside of Africa, with 40% of the total number of slaves that were brought to the Americas being taken there. Brazil was the last country in the Western world to abolish slavery, and by 1888, an estimated 4 million slaves had been taken to the country. Now, due to so much mixture that occurred in Brazil, mulatto is probably too broad of a term to use. Brazilian censuses use skin color categories, and most identify as pardos. The Portuguese settlers would start this intensive race-mixing process in Brazil, and some believe it was even used as a form of domination from the Portuguese against the native Brazilian and African population. White and black relationships started as soon as the mid-1500s, with many Portuguese men marrying black women. Mulatto children were many times also enslaved, although some were educated and became important people in colonial Brazil. Probably the most famous case is Chica da Silva, a mixed-race Brazilian slave who married a rich gold mine owner and became one of the richest people in Brazil. A 2015 autosomal genetic study concluded that African ancestry accounts for 21% of the total population, and African contribution is highest in northeast Brazil. Cartagena, Colombia was presumably the biggest slave port in South America, with more than 1 million African slaves passing through it. The mulatto population, which accounts for 14% of the population, was mainly a result of interactions between the white and black communities. There are also black communities that did not mix as much and retained much of their original African culture. Colombians of African descent make up 10.5% of the country's population, and Colombia has the fourth largest black population in the Western Hemisphere, following Brazil, Haiti, and the United States. Venezuela also has a significant mulatto population. 500,000 African slaves were transported between 1576 and 1810. African descent Venezuelans make up 3.7% of the population and reside mainly among the Caribbean coastal areas. Small black groups can be found in Peru and Argentina. There were two types of black slaves that were brought to Peru, the first being negros bosles, or those born in Africa, and second, negros ladinos, or Hispanicized blacks that already spoke Spanish, many of which were mulatos, descendants of Spanish men and African women. In Argentina, African slaves were brought into the colonies of Rio de Plata beginning in 1588. Slave trafficking flourished there through the ports of Buenos Aires, and by 1810, the city had 9,615 Africans and mulatos residing there. Recent DNA studies show that Argentina's gene pool is currently 9% African. And now on to the good old United States. Historically in the U.S., mulatto children were usually the result of the sexual abuse and rape of slave women during the colonial and post-revolutionary slave period by white men in power. This was usually done not only to satisfy the master's needs, but to produce more children that would become slaves. There did also exist concubinage, and even in some cases, long-term romantic partnerships, although these so-called consensual relationships can be seen as an exercise of white patriarchal authority. White men were not the only ones that had sexual encounters with slaves. White women, though to a lesser extent, did also have physical relationships with slave men. Some presume these women did it out of boredom or frustration, while others believe it gave them a sense of power in a time where they had very little freedoms or power compared to their husbands. Now the fate of these mixed race children would vary depending on the area. For mulatto children born to white women in the deep south, they would many times be sold into slavery and infanticide was not uncommon. 
In areas like Virginia, the principle of partis secutor ventrum, which dates back to the colonial period, was applied, which said that children that were born in the colony were born into the status of their mother. During the colonial years, white women, indentured servant or free, and African men made unions. Because the women were free, their mixed-race children were also born free. They and their descendants formed most of the free people of color during the colonial period in Virginia. Between 1790 to 1810, the free people of color from the Upper South were mostly descended from unions between white women and African or African-American men from Virginia. Unfortunately for mulatto children born to slave mothers, they also became slaves, regardless of who their father was. After the Revolutionary War, the number of free people of color increased substantially, especially in the North and in certain areas of the South as slaves were freed. The most notable relationship between a slave master and his slave is that of Thomas Jefferson and his slave Sally Hemings. Jefferson took Hemings as his concubine for nearly 40 years. They had six children, four of which survived into adulthood, and he freed them all. Sally Hemings herself was mixed race, making their children seven-eighths white, and three out of the four surviving children were able to pass and enter into the white community. Mixed race African Americans sometimes use their racially ambiguous appearance in order to pass as white and evade the restrictions set against them to seek better lives. During the Jim Crow era, some would use passing to avoid segregation. Fast forward to now though, passing is a lot more controversial and is often seen as a rejection of blackness, family, and culture. Mulatto was used as an official census racial category in the United States up until 1930. In the early 20th century, several southern states adopted the one-drop rule, classifying all mulattos or mixed-race people as black. This was done as a way to maintain racial purity within the white community and to maintain separation of racial classes. Jump to the year 2000 and people now are allowed to identify as having more than one type of ethnic ancestry. Now, one specific mulatto group within the United States I wanted to highlight are the Louisiana Creoles. They are descendants of the inhabitants of colonial Louisiana during both French and Spanish rule. After the Haitian Revolution, thousands of refugees, both whites and free people of color, arrived, often bringing their African slaves. The French Creoles and Africans created a hybrid language called Louisiana Creole, which is still spoken in some regions today. Creole culture is a blend of these cultures, including some Native American as well. Jambalaya and gumbo are some famous Creole dishes, and Zydeco is a type of Creole music. Alright guys, and that was this for part one. Make sure you stay tuned for part two, in which I will be going over these same areas, but focusing on the mixed African and indigenous populations instead. So give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll see you all in the next one.